So are you guys fans of musks? Musk fragrances, do you enjoy them? I'm a big fan of musks. If you've been following me, you already know this. And also, really enjoy white musks. White musks are some of the cleanest form of musks you can get, non-animalics. And we've got a bunch of them here, 13 of them, that go in multiple different directions. And you're gonna find out what they are here in today's video. And also, there's a few budget fragrance options as well, as far as white musks are concerned after the outro that I didn't wanna leave off somebody looking for something inexpensive. So find out about white musks today on the channel coming right up. Thanks so much for tuning in, it's Sebastian. We're talking about white musk fragrances. Let me know if you're a fan of these kind of fragrances. I've been a big fan of white musk for men from the house of uh, the body shop, but this is no longer selling. They now have something like a blue musk and a black musk, but they only have the white musk for women right now, which I'm assuming it's very unisex, but they're separating for genders. But this has been one of my favorite budget fragrances for the longest time. It is no longer selling. But there's a whole world of white musks out there. And I've got 13 of them here today in various different budgets. And then also some really inexpensive ones after the outro, as I was saying. But before I start the fragrances, a little info. White musks are the cleanest form of musks you can get. They're non-animalic, and typically they're probably made synthetically. Especially now, they're not, even like the real musks are not used making the actual animal. They're creating the, the, the musks with synthetic notes to create kind of a similar smelling kind of a fragrance. But again, these are white musks, not your traditional musks. So they all go very clean kind of ethereal skin scent, things like that come to mind. Some even go into soapy directions, kind of a laundry clean kind of directions. So various different directions for white musks and I really enjoy them. They're very clean and easy to wear. Sometimes you want something simplistic. They are kind of simplistic as well. The actual real musks can be a bit challenging. They can go animalic, but these are some of the super cleanest kinds you can get. So let's go ahead and get started and I'll tell you a little bit more about the different types of musks that are in these particular fragrances. We're going to the house of BDK first. 312 Saint Honoré, this one right here. This is a fairly new fragrance. It just came out and it's inspired by the first flagship store of BDK in Paris and inspired because the, the store is made very open and airy and the fragrance is very open and airy. It does utilize a lot of white musk here along with additional musks that are in here and other notes like angelica root, orange blossom, there's iris, ambroxan, ambrostar, of course the white musk, there's tonka, pink pepper and pink pepper leaves and some oud in here as well. For me, it's a mixture of the white musk, ambroxan, and ambrostar. Those are basically the musks in here. Along the way, you'll have some vegetal touches and powdery touches from the angelica roots and also the iris. But the orange blossom does stand out as well. And then with spicy touches and also that very, very light oud in the uh, dry down is there as well. But for me, it's a very musky, airy, very much inspired by the store kind of a fragrance. It smells really, really great. If you enjoy these kind of ethereal fragrances, white musks and things like that, definitely check out 312 Saint Honoré. It's actually the address of the store, the flagship BDK store in Paris. If you're in Paris, definitely go visit. But moving on to the house of Les Eaux Primordiales, it's color Premier, this one right here. So this one just says musks. I get a very white musk effect here, nothing animalic. It's also very clean and laundry-like here. It does feature prominent aldehydes along with the musks and the aldehydes. There's ambroxan, there's peony, there's pear, there's jasmine and rose. So lightly fruity, floral, but very musky and aldehydic. So if you've ever smelled aldehydes, you kind of get an idea of what it is. It's kind of very fizzy, sparkling, and a bit soapy. So all of these notes along with the aldehydes creates a very soapy, kind of laundry detergent-like, but more cross between laundry detergent and hand soap. But in the end, it's very clean and white musky as well. So it does say musks, as I said, but for me, I don't get like your traditional like animalic deer musk in here. I get the clean white musks and it's a great clean fragrance to wear. I enjoy this in the heat in the summertime because it's very clean when you spritz it on, that kind of subconscious feeling of cleanliness. After a very sweaty day in the heat, the humidity, this is the kind of uh, fragrance I I like uh, when it just kind of cools you down and cleans you up kind of a thing. So this is the Les Eaux Primordial Color Premier. Let me know if you're a fan of that fragrance. That brand is now selling here in the States at uh, Ministry of Scent, locally in San Francisco. If you're visiting, check them out. 
Next fragrance going to the house of Zerzhov. It's Apollonia, this one right here. So Apollonia is basically white musk, orris, and white flowers. So white musk, very clean and musky. It's one of the cleanest musky fragrances here that I am going to talk about, but also powdery. But also buttery creamy. Uh, I think it's orris butter and you got that texture here when you're wearing this fragrance and then of course it's blended with white flowers as well. A bit nondescript white flowers. There's definitely a white floral effect here but it's not going to stand out and smell like tuberose or jasmine or maybe it might but they're, they're kind of like it's like a bouquet of white flowers basically so it's not very descript but it's oh distinct smelling but it's the orris butter it's clean and powdery and the white musk very very clean very clean here musky but a wonderful offering from this house i know some people think it's too simplistic for zerzhov but i i quite like this particular fragrance from this house it's one of my favorites and i enjoy the bottle as well it's really beautiful as you can see so that's apollonia from the house of zerzhov a really great white musk fragrance. But moving on to the house of Akakapa, it's Muschio Bianco, this one right here. So this is the EDP version, which is my favorite of the two. You can get a lighter version in the EDT. I haven't mentioned that on the channel before, but now I have. But yeah, the bottle and the, the black label is the EDP. And then the I think the whitish label is the EDT. But this is all very clean and musky. Muschio Bianco, a white musk. Bianco is white. Muschio musk. White musk, aldehydes, lavender, juniper berry lemon and cardamom it's one of the cleanest fragrances it's white musk along with all these clean notes there's aldehydes in muschio bianco as well just like color premier but color premier is much more aldehydic you'll definitely notice it here it doesn't stand out as much as color premier but it does stand out along with the white musk there's also some aromatic touches spicy touches it's clean that juniper berries gives it a bit of a metallic edge but a wonderful offering i love this one because it's simplistic Grab and go, smell great, soapy, clean, effervescent, and musky, but on the clean, musky side. Akakapa Muschio Bianco is a wonderful offering. If you don't know that fragrance, please check it out. I highly recommend it. It's one of my favorites that I recommend on the channel over and over again. So next up, we've gone to the house of Chanel. And yes, Chanel does have a white musk. It's a floral take on white musk along with aldehydes once again. It's 1957. And Chanel and aldehydes go hand in hand. They use quite a bit of aldehydes and it's definitely prominent here. And I feel like aldehydes does marry perfectly with the note of white musk. This particular fragrance does have white musk throughout the whole life of the fragrance, starting with the top notes, the heart notes, and base notes. So it's a white musk bomb, I, I would think. But it's a floral take, an aldehydic take on the white musk. It also gets powdery and also musky and spicy throughout other notes that are in the fragrance as well. In addition to the aldehydes and the white musk, there's orange blossom here. There's orris for the powdery effect, cashmiran, bergamot, pink pepper, and coriander, cedar, honey, and vanilla. Really, really wonderful. One of the best from the less exclusives uh, of fragrances. Uh, I think maybe like number four or number five for me on the list. I quite like it. It's a really, really great fragrance. There is a bit of a honeyed vanilla touch in the dry down, but for me, it's all very musky, clean, aldehydic, and floral and powdery. Wonderful offering from Chanel. Then moving on to the house of Armani, the Armani Privé collection. It's New York. Are you guys familiar with this fragrance? I wasn't aware of this one. Some uh, Somebody that I know... Uh, you know, a sniff session client gave me a gift uh, and I was really wowed by the gift because it was, uh, you know, like a present that they brought me here visiting the studio. And actually, it's a really wonderful offering. Very, very clean. It's white musk, lots of it. And once again, we've got aldehydes. There's also vanilla here with incense, iris, white tea, cashmere, peony, white pepper, ambrette, and neroli. It does seem a bit more complex than a lot of other fragrances, but in the end, it's white musk. It's very powdery. It's very aldehydic. There's vanilla touches, smoky touches, and of course, there's coziness from the white tea. White musk, uh, it's not as um, like if you're if you're wearing a white musk like the body shop, very simplistic, easy to wear. This one, it's complex. It's much more complex because there's layers and layers of notes. So in the end, it's also very clean and fizzy, but there are things happening throughout the life like the incense and the vanilla does come in. The iris does come in. All of these notes do show up. But in the end, it's a really great creation by Fanny Ball from AF, uh, IFF. This is Ar uh, Armani, and it's called New York. So it's Armani Privé Fragrances New York. Um, if you are in New York City, I think it's a Bergdorf's uh, uh, exclusive. So check it out. I, I, I highly recommend that, especially for a nice, really complex white musk fragrance. But moving on to the House of Reminiscence, it's musk, this one right here. 
Once again, we've got white musk here with coumarin, amber, almonds, powdery notes, ylang ylang, and white flowers. In the end, white musk is very clean, but when you add some other additional things, it does make the fragrance complex. And it depends on if you want something simplistic, you would go with a simplistic take on white musk, or if you want something a bit more substantial, this one has the coumarin, which is basically tonka. There's also almonds, so a bit of almondy effect here. It does have amber, powdery notes, ylang ylang for that tropical yellow floral touch and white flowers. In the end, it's it's about the white musk, but there's layers of things happening here. Eventually it does get complex, but it starts out very clean and smelling fresh and a bit laundry-like. But yeah, it does develop into a fragrance with additional things happening. So you gotta understand that some fragrances with white musk are simplistic and some are more complex and in the end i like complex fragrances but sometimes i want something more simplistic so i decide which direction i want to go with the, with the specific fragrance i want but reminiscences musk is really awesome check it out if you don't know that one clean but also very layered with the things happening throughout the life and then uh, we've got the house of unui nomad with nothing but sea and sky again this is a wonderful offering it's white musks with sandalwood so it's clean and creamy the sandalwood is a creamy layer of wood in here there's milky notes and there's bergamot so there's some freshness when it starts off but eventually dries down to this kind of like very laundry like white musk cleanliness with sandalwood and additional milky notes so it's a very very clean and cozy and milky and lactonic when it's drying down but this very very clean white musk and bergamot up top uh, which is basically what the adventure is so it might come off a bit simplistic but i think it's 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 got layers and i love the fact that the white musk develops into that kind of creamy milky lactonic effect when it's drying down it's a really really great fragrance from one of my favorite niche houses out of france if you don't know when we know mod you got to check them out i really do love them and this is one of my favorites from the house it's nothing but sea and sky a wonderful offering from that house. If you don't know it, do check it out. I do have some videos on the channel of Nui No Mod fragrances. But moving on to the house of Ella K, it's Musk K, this one right here. So if you don't know Ella K fragrances, it is a brand with fragrances all created by Sonia Constant, who's done fragrances for Tom Ford and various other brands. This is a white musk floral fragrance in that there's lots of white musk here, but along the way there's lots of, lots of uh, floral notes and of course there's peppery spicy notes as well. We've got white musk here, sand lily, white pepper, salty iris, mangrove driftwood, vetiver, ambrofix, and cedar. Eventually it does get woody in the dry down, maybe a bit uh, ambery as well from the ambrofix note, but up top it's very floral and fresh and clean and spicy with the white musk and all the other notes that are happening. It does say salty iris. I, 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 would, I would see that, but it's not a very strong saltiness, but I think the effect is here with the iris note that's in here and a little bit of marine thing, but it's not overwhelming with that mangrove driftwood. A great house to look into, Ella K. It's Musk K from Ella K. Uh, check that out. Are you guys familiar with uh, Ella K fragrances? Do let me know. Put a comment down below. But moving on to the House of Fleur, it's Missing Person. Very skin scent here. Very skin scent. It's basically a skin scent with lots of white musk and skin musk and sandalwood. Blonde woods, jasmine, neroli, orange flower, bergamot, and cyclamen. So basically it's a mixture of lots of woods with white musk and skin musk. And then some citrus floral notes and citruses along the way. But a, a very clean fragrance. It's a bit more minimalistic than some of the other fragrances here. It comes off basically like a second skin. So in the end it's not very overwhelming. It's just a very minimalistic fragrance if you're into the idea of things that are not necessarily too intense that's the kind of fragrance this is so it's white musky very clean as i said but very close to the skin so it's fleur's missing person the name kind of makes sense of what it is so missing person there's no scent there kind of a thing but there is a scent it nicely blends with your chemistry it creates its own kind of musk kind of a thing moving on to the house of juliet has a gun it's musk invisible this one right here this is basically white musk with cotton flower and jasmine. So in the end, it's very powdery, a bit milky lactonic in here, that cotton flower and jasmine combo. There is like a powdered milk effect for me when I'm wearing this one, but I believe it's the combination of the white musk that's in here that's very, very clean, very, very powdery, along with the cotton flower and jasmine. That's the kind of effect it creates for me, but also really enjoy wearing it. It's a very cozy fragrance. Musk fragrances are very cozy, not always with white musks, but you know, regular musks, but this particular one, the fact that that it has this kind of powdered milk effect creates for a very clean uh, you know cozy uh, you know 
effect with the fragrance and the notes together. And that's the kind of fragrance uh, I really quite enjoy. If you like powdery musks, definitely check this out. This is uh, Juliet Has a Gun Musk Invisible. Let me know your thoughts. Are you familiar with that one? But moving on to the House of Initio Parfums, it's Musk Therapy, this one right here. Musk Therapy is a fruity white musk, so there's definitely fruity and citrusy touches, so it's very fresh. Very fresh and clean. I think this is a perfect summertime fragrance. You can, you know, liberally spray this stuff and it won't overwhelm. I really love it for that effect. It's the kind of musk I like to wear in the summertime because it's very, very fresh. It's white musk with mandarin. There's blackcurrant, pink musk, bergamot, and sandalwood. In the end, it's very fresh, as I said, citrusy. Creamy when it's drying down with that sandalwood. It's the kind of sandalwood I enjoy, quite creamy and very cozy. A bit milky lactonic, but it's clean and fresh and musky and uh, white musky up top with the white musk and the fruits. Really wonderful offering from Initio. Again, this one to me, it's almost like perfectly made to wear in the summertime. I mean, you can wear it any time of the year, but it's fresh enough and clean enough and fruity enough to wear when it's really, really warm outside. I think that's the best experience I've had with musk, musk Therapy. So Musk Therapy from Initio Parfums is a really nice offering from that house. And then finally, I'm going to end the list here with Tom Ford's White Suede. And even though it says musk, I get a very clean musk here. Although there's a suede and leather in this, so that might kind of create a bit of more animalic effect in the fragrance. A bit more animalistic, I should say. But the musk for me is on the clean side, especially for the fact that there's sandalwood once again, lily of the valley, which is the green floral note. There's saffron to kind of enhance the suede leather effect in this to give it a more a spicy edge. There's olibanum, amber, thyme, and tea. It's a really, really great fragrance. I've had the decanter of this for the, for the longest time. Uh, maybe probably around 10 years. I bought it around 2015. I just picked up a bottle at a really great discount. I feel like the smell has changed a little bit between this white bottle and the darker decanter bottle. I really love this. It's a great fragrance. It's clean. It's not very overwhelming. It's got that leather, which adds that kind of sexy layer to the fragrance, which kind of creates an effect of more of a realistic deer musk. But definitely the musk in this is very, very clean. And the fact that they've thrown in that Lily of the Valley in this, it makes for a really great wear. A really wonderful offering. And I'm ending the, the video with this fragrance because definitely it's a great Tom Ford. Uh, a great offering from this house, White Suede from the Tom Ford Private Blend Collection. Anyway, that's my video of white musk fragrances. Let me know your thoughts on these fragrances and do you have another favorite white musk fragrance? Put a comment down below so I can find out. Uh, otherwise, thanks so much for watching today's video. If you have any questions or comments, please do list below. Please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye. So remember, as I said, I have uh, some budget ones here and I've been a big fan of uh, White Musk for Men from the Body Shop. It is no longer available. Are you guys aware of that? I wore so much of this one and I would get compliments with this one, but for me, it would be compliments after I sprayed it because it's a very light fragrance and people would react very positively. It was very clean, but I have to go check Blue Musk for Men for uh, from the Body Shop. But in the meantime, I've got three great fragrances, the first of which is Tesori de Orient White Musk here. It's um, Muschio Bianco is basically what it's called, but it's a uh, white musk translated. Kind of sort of similar to the Akakapa Muschio Bianco. This is much cheaper. This is basically musk, freesia, aldehydes, and rose. There's that aldehydes again that really does really wonderfully, you know, mesh with white musk notes. And in here, it's fizzy, sparkling, effervescent with a bit of floralcy from the freesia and rose. If you can find this, I got it in Italy at a drugstore or like a grocery store aisle of, um, you know, drugstore products. It was like eight euros. So I think it's selling here as well for a really low price. The next is Finery's I'm a Musk. Once again, a very clean white musk, a fluffy musk, a cotton blossom musk. So it's fluffy musk, cotton blossom, creamy sandalwood, very smooth, very creamy. Again, it says fluffy musk. For me, it's a white musk because it comes off very clean. And the fact that it's powdery and fluffy and airy and also milky sandalwood there, really great cozy wear here. So I'm a Musk from Finery. Last but not least, this is, this is a, it's an old school uh, recommendation, uh, but I'm going to recommend it. It's a Jovan's White Musk. It's a very cheap fragrance, un inexpensive. You can buy them probably for around eight dollars or something. It's a bit more complex with the notes, but it wears kind of simplistic. It's musk, green apple, mint, citruses, cantaloupes, cloves, clary sage, and geranium. So there's a lot of stuff going on in here, and it doesn't, to me, smell traditionally light. What? 
like white musk from the body shop but um it's called white musk so i just wanted to offer it and suggest it to you guys are you familiar with this one white musk for men from jovan do let me know put a comment down below and that's basically all i have for you today see you guys later bye bye